Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-Level Maths. Here we're looking at combining multiple graph transformations from last year so that we can see how to answer questions from exercise 2F. So just a reminder of the graph transformations we saw from the first year of A-Level Maths. Just a reminder then, anything that's inside the brackets, for example, f of x plus a, f of x, f of minus x, and f of a of x, affects the x-axis coordinate. So that's going to be a movement horizontally, left to right, right to left, etc. And remember, inside the brackets is always inverse as well. So if you expect it to move right by a, in fact, the opposite is going to happen. It's going to move left by a. Um, the reflection, there's not so much of an inverse to that. The inverse of a reflection is a reflection, so that stays as it is. And f of ax, where the a is inside the brackets, you would think horizontal stretch by a scale factor a. Uh, in actual fact, it's the inverse of that. It is a stretch of scale factor 1 over a. And then any transformation that's outside the brackets, these are going to affect the y-axis coordinates. So we're going to expect a movement up and down with relation to these, um, these transformations here. So what we're going to look at is a couple of questions in which we've got multiple graph transformations. So in this question here we have y equals f of x and we'd like to sketch y equals 2 f of x minus 1. So what, how do we tell the order that we're going to do these two transformations in? We've got a scale factor stretch in the y-axis by 2 and then we're moving it down by 1 um, as well. In this case, because we're outside the brackets, thing ha things happen as normal. So in this case here, we're just going to apply bod mass to our transformations. Okay, so in this case here, the A coordinate is going to get stretched down by factor of 2. Remember that stretching works by if you're on the top, you stretch upwards. If you're on the bottom, you stretch downwards. So the, t the 2 minus 1 coordinate here will stretch down to uh, well, this is the y coordinate, so this one is going to be the coordinate that's affected. Uh, minus 1 will move down to minus 2, a scale factor of 2. And then it's going to move down by another 1, so it's going to move down an extra 1 to minus 3. This coordinate here is 6, 4. 4 is the y coordinate, so that's the coordinate that's going to be affected. That's going to get stretched by a scale factor um, 2 to 8 but then subtract 1 and you get 7. So I think the y coordinate here is going to be 7. And let's just draw that all in and it looks like that's the case. Perfect. Um, remember that these coordinates, the red coordinates that are on the um, y-axis at the moment, in the first stretch, if they're on the x-axis, they're not going to move to start with. But then when we move them down by 1, they're going to move down by 1. So we can see here that all of these um, x-axis intersections are slightly lower than their x-axis intersections at that time. Okay. So uh, let's have a go at another question uh, to do with the same graph here. Now we have f of x plus 2 and then close brackets plus 2. Now in this case here we have two different transformations that affect different coordinates. This transformation here affects the x-coordinates, and this transformation here affects the y-coordinates. And in this case, it doesn't matter which one we do first. Let's have a go at doing the x-transformation first. Um, so in this case, we're going to move it left by 2, because inside is inverse. So just track your coordinates. So in this case here, we're going to move from 2 to 0. And in this case, we're going to move from 6 to 4. Now we need to do the y transformation. This is going to be moving up 2. So at the moment we're at minus 1 on this y coordinate down here. So we're going to move this up to 1. And at the moment we're at 4 for this y coordinate. So we're going to have to move it up to 6 for this um, y coordinate here. And then we're going to sketch everything through these two points here. Okay, so... Let's uh, apply those coordinates there, and this is what we get. Okay, it says here you should apply the bracket parts first. Um, in fact, it doesn't really matter. Um, if, you're, if you've got two transformations that affect different axes, it doesn't matter which one you do first, because they affect different parts of the coordinate. This transformation here affected the first part of the coordinate, the x-coordinate, 
and the second part of the transformation affected the y coordinate, the second part of the coordinate. Okay, let's have a go at uh, two graph stretches. So in this case here, we've got y equals a quarter f of 2x. And once again, we can see here that we have two transformations, one of the x-axis variety, this one here, and one of the y-axis variety, this one here. And it doesn't matter which one we do first. So let's pick the um, two that's inside the brackets. Now remember when we're inside the brackets, it's inverse, so it's not stretch out by a factor of two, it's stretch inwards by a scale factor of half, effectively. So in this case here, if we've got a six, this is going to move into a three. And if we've got a two here, then this is going to move into a one. Now we'd like to stretch the y-axis by a scale factor of a quarter. Now on the B coordinate here, the Y axis coordinate is already 4, so this is going to move down to 1. So this new coordinate here is going to be 3, 1. And this coordinate here is minus 1 at the moment, so now it's going to be minus a quarter. So the coordinate here is going to be 1 and minus a quarter. So let's stretch that around the axes, and we get a coordinate like this, or a graph like this. So it's been squished inwards by a scale factor half, and it's been squished inwards on the y-axis by a scale factor a quarter as well, just like this. Okay, so we've got another one then. Let's have a look at some reflections and some translations. In this case here, we've got two transformations, one outside the brackets, one inside the brackets, so it doesn't matter the order that we apply these transformations in. In this case here, let's look at what we've got inside the brackets. We've got a movement right by one, because... You would think it would be move left one if it's negative, but actually it's right because it's uh, inside inverse. And then this one here is a y-axis transformation, but it's a y-reflection. So that means it's going to move up to down and down to up. So it's going to be this type of reflection. So let's move things to the right by one first, not that it matters which order we do them in. So in this case here, the 6 is going to move to a 7. And the 2 is going to move to a 3. And then we're going to reflect things up to down and down to up. So in this case here, if it starts in the top left, then we want it to start this graph in the bottom left. And if this graph is going to finish up in the bottom right, then we want it to finish up in the top right. And remember, all of these um, intersections will get moved across by 1 as well. And then when we reflect, the axis intersections are not going to change. So it's going to look exactly like this. So the intersections on the axis are pretty much exactly where I predicted them to be, moving the intersections right by one and then not reflecting them because they're on the line of reflection. And then because we've started up in the bottom, up in the top left in the original graph, we're starting down in the bottom left on the reflected graphs, and vice versa for the positives. Let's have a look at um, a few transformations, including the modulus transformation now. Now remember, the modulus transformation reflects anything from the negative part of the graph into the positive part of the graph. Um, and let's start with y equals, sorry, f of x equals ln x. Now, just a reminder what that graph looks like. It looks like this. It starts down on an asymptote um, going down towards uh, minus infinity at x equals 0. It comes up, intersects 1, and then it's going to go up and up and up and up, but shallower each time. In this case here, we need to sketch the graph 2 f of x minus 3. Now, for the first transformation here, um, we're going to, we've got two transformations that are both affecting the y coordinates. So it's important that you times by two first and follow bod mass and then move it down by three. A good way of sketching is to do each translation one step at a time, although it's fine to calculate the coordinates at the end. So let's just do the first transformation first. Stretching up by a scale factor of two is a bit difficult to see with a lone graph, but just make sure that if you're from your first sketch to your second sketch, you can clearly see that um, it's been stretched. Now we'll move it down by three. So it looks a little bit like this. The asymptote for the x 
uh, equals zero line is going to remain the same. <clears throat> so this is how I would prefer you to do your graph transformations. Draw them out one at a time, and then maybe draw the final one as a big clear one, so that you may have to um, draw extra lines onto that if need be. <clears throat> so this is our graph here. Find the x-axis intercept, okay, so to find the x-axis intercept we set the y-coordinate equal to zero. <clears throat> so 2 ln x minus 3 equals zero. So in this case here it's going to be ln, sorry, e of 1.5. So the x-axis intersection here is e to the 1.5 uh, to three significant figures, 4.48. Okay, and that's the final answer to part A. Part B then, let's have a go at drawing the um, graph for this one. So the first thing I would do here is probably draw what's inside the brackets first. I don't think it affects the graph because we've got effectively one inside the bracket transformation and one outside the bracket transformation. So yes, in fact, it doesn't matter the order that you do these in. But let's go ahead and do the x-axis one first anyway. So, in this case here, we're going to be reflecting, because it's a negative symbol, uh, reflecting the x-coordinates. So that means we're going to move from left to right and right to left. So the graph that's now on the right-hand side is going to move on to the left-hand side as a mirrored image. So it looks a little bit like this. And the 1 will move to minus 1. Now we need to modulus the graph. And if we remember, modulusing the whole graph just moves the bottom part of the coordinate, any negative y-coordinates, onto the top. So the bottom part here is going to be reflected to the top. The top is going to stay where it is. So now we'll apply the modulus transformation, and this is what we get. This is our final answer graph. We've got no more x or y-axis intersections to work out, so the asymptote is still x equals 0. Okay, your turn to have a go at this question here then. When you're doing these questions, you can uh, do it one sketch at a time if you want to. I'm just going to jump straight to the final answer. Um, but make sure that you do write on the coordinates of intersections if you know them, or where these A and B coordinates end up after your transformation. Okay, pause the video and try these three questions out. <clears throat> right then, so let's have a go at the first one then. So in this case here we've got two transformations outside the brackets, which means these are two y-axis transformations. Therefore it's important we apply BODS mass. So, let's follow the A coordinate first. We're only working with the y coordinate here, so we're only really working with the minus 2. The graph is going to still probably stay in the x axis position of minus 2 as this number here. So 3 times minus 2 is minus 6, so it's going to move all the way down to minus 6, and then move up by 2 from the plus 2 transformation, so it's now going to be at minus 4. So my first coordinate, a prime, is going to be at minus 2, minus 4. This zero coordinate here, I know where that is intersecting here, times it by three, well you still have zero, and then move up by two. So my zero coordinate axis intersection is at two now. And then with B three, four, we're probably gonna stick with the X coordinate of three, and we'll just be changing the Y coordinate of four. So four times three is 12. Oh, sorry, uh, yeah, 12. And then add on 2, we get 14. So very, very high. 3, 14. Oops, 3, 14. Oh, 3.14. Hey. Uh, okay. So in this case here, the graph is going to look like this. Okay, we're not told where this, trans this uh, x-axis intersection is, so we don't need to write it in. <clears throat> okay, part B then. Part B is giving us two transformations that affect different axes, so it doesn't matter which coordinate I move first. In this case here, we've got a right by 1 and a down by 5. So let's do the right by 2 first. So right by 2, we'll get put this on 0. So I'll put a little marker at 0 just to remind me later on. Um, and then, so right by 2 and then down by 5, so this is going to be at 0, minus 7. 
Okay, for the big, for the zero coordinate, let's do that one next. <coughs> we'll move it right by 2 and then down by 5. So this is going to be at 2 minus 5. For the B coordinate here, we're going to move it right by 2 to 5 and then down by 5 to minus 1. So it's going to be at 5 minus 1. And that was the maximum point. So my graph shouldn't be going any further above the x-axis, and it looks a little bit like that. Okay. <clears throat> Part C here, a little bit more tricky, but we've seen one of these questions earlier in the video. Feel free to rewind if you didn't quite catch that um, example. Um, in this case here, we've got two transformations, a modulus transformation and a reflection transformation. So in this case here, what I'll probably do is I'll draw the reflection graph as a small graph here to start us off. So in this case, when we reflect, it's going to look like, um, well, on the right-hand side, it would just do that flicky thing because we reflect from left to right. And then on the right-hand side, it's going to look like this. Okay, now I need, so this is just like my workings down here at the moment for part C. Um, and now I'm going to have to do the modulus of this function. So anything from the bottom is now going to get reflected to the top. So in this case here we get the A coordinate going this way and anything that was on the top is going to stay there, so that's going to stay here and then we're going to have it reflect back upwards because it was on the bottom and anything from the bottom gets reflected up to the top. Now let's track where these coordinates have ended up. So B3, 4 was reflected over to th minus 3, 4 and it's probably going to stay there because it's already on the top. So that was a relatively easy, straightforward coordinate. Now for the slightly more difficult minus 2, minus 2, this got reflected over to 2, minus 2, and then the modulus will bring the negative y coordinate up to the top, so this will now be at 2, 2. The 0, 0 coordinate has stayed where it is. Okay, so there we are. That's all the combinations of graph transformations you need to know. Um, we haven't done one, which is what we get if we have two transformations inside the brackets, but it looks like for the uh, syllabus we don't need to know that, so don't worry about that. All right then, so have plenty of practice on exercise 2F uh, and keep on practicing. Um, thanks very much for watching.